most people, November the 5th, 1924 was an ordinary day. But for Pui, the abdicated last emperor of the Qin dynasty, it was an extraordinary one, as he had not expected that this would be his last day in the Forbidden City. Since his abdication 13 years earlier, Pui had never left the Forbidden City, and everything in the Inner Palace, including all the cultural relics, were still his possessions. These were collections of valuables that had been brought together by emperors over a period of 2,000 years, and they embraced almost the whole uninterrupted culture and history of Chinese civilization. We are Throughout Chinese history, the replacement of one dynasty by another often resulted in the loss of or damage to a large number of cultural relics. For example, Xiao Yi, Emperor Yuan Di of the Lian dynasty in the 6th century burned what he had collected before his imperial capital was occupied. But during normal peaceful times enjoyed by each dynasty, the collection of exquisite cultural relics by the imperial court was the norm. The Qin dynasty, the last dynasty in Chinese history, witnessed a highly prosperous age from the reign of Emperor Kang Qi to the reign of Emperor Qianlong. And it was during this period that large quantities of cultural relics collected by the imperial family were preserved in the Forbidden City and in the imperial palaces where the family would live on shorter stays. Today, nobody is sure about the exact number of cultural relics collected by the Qing court or the whereabouts of items known to be missing. But the number was so great that what we see here are only some of the catalogs of calligraphic works and paintings collected by the Qin dynasty. Pui was expelled from the Forbidden City on November the 5th, 1924, and a month later, a special committee began sorting and counting the cultural relics in the inner palace. Most of the porcelain was stored in the Palace of Peace and Longevity, the Hall of Imperial Supremacy, and the Palace of Abstinence. Most of the calligraphic works and paintings were kept in the Palace of Quintessence, while gold, bronze, and jade objects were retained in a number of different halls. It became clear, however, that many cultural relics had disappeared before Pui left the Forbidden City. But the first major loss of cultural relics from the court of the Qin dynasty had in fact taken place as far back as 1860. Yuan Ming Yuan was not only a large and a magnificent imperial garden built during the Qin dynasty, but also a major location where cultural relics of the imperial family were stored. From the paintings, 40 sites in Yuan Ming Yuan, executed by court painters Shen Yuan and Dong Dai, and now retained in the French National Library in Paris, we can visualize the original features of the garden. Over 200 calligraphic works and paintings by noted figures of the Tang and Sun dynasty alone were preserved here. There was also the Chamber of Literary Profundity, the largest library in China at the time. Among its collections was the complete library of four branches of books, comprising more than 30,000 volumes. In Travasti Castle were no less than 100,000 images of Buddha collected since the reign of Kang Chi. But in just a few days, all these volumes disappeared. On October the 6th, 1860, the Anglo-French Allied forces stormed into Beijing and into Duan Ming Yuan. And on the next day, they began a frantic rampage of looting. 
A reporter from the British newspaper The Times described the looting in a dispatch. He wrote, After they entered the Emperor's palace, nobody knew what he should take. He dropped silver for gold, and then he dropped gold for gems and clocks inlaid with jewelry. Priceless porcelain objects and enamel vases were broken, simply because they were too big to carry away. Invaluable works of calligraphy and painting were only so much waste paper in the eyes of these soldiers, who even burned them to light cigarettes. After three days of looting this magnificent site, the Anglo-French Allied forces set Yuan Ming Yuan on fire. The great French writer Victor Hugo denounced the event as the atrocity it was. He said that after they had looted and burned Yuan Ming Yuan, the two robbers, France and England, had equally divided the spoils, and then hand in hand had left all the way back to Europe. Fondainebleau was the palace the French king used for short stays. Here, Napoleon III built China Hall to retain and store valuables taken from the Chinese emperor's palace, or, to be more exact, the spoils of war grabbed by the commander-in-chief of the Anglo-French Allied Forces. These cultural relics from Yuan Min Yuan have never been made open to visitors. The法官当时抢走之后，有一些很多的这些珍贵文物呢，当时到了封建贝勒贝的装修，他出现了一些破坏性的一些破坏。像一些珐琅的一些香炉，他把香炉盖给掀起来，当这个吊顶使，抢出
During the invasion by the eight-powered allied forces, Yuan Ming Yuan was totally destroyed and left in flames, while other imperial palaces and princely mansions were sacked. The great encyclopedia of Yongle of the Ming Dynasty, then kept at the Imperial Academy, was burned. And out of the 11,000 volumes of this earliest and most comprehensive encyclopedia in the world, only 300 or so volumes were left intact. 107 of these volumes were retained in China, while the rest were obtained by libraries or individuals in other countries. The fate of the Forbidden City and its cultural relics changed with the destiny of the nation and the ups and downs of the political situation. In the last years of Pui's stay in the Forbidden City, eunuchs began to steal its treasures. Numerous antique shops suddenly began springing up around the gate of earthly peace, not far from the Forbidden City, and most of their backstage bosses were, in fact, eunuchs. Many precious calligraphic works and paintings hidden by eunuchs were rediscovered after the founding of the People's Republic. Six steeds at Zhao Ling tomb by Zhao Ling, a prominent painter of the Jing dynasty in the 12th century, was found in the bottom of the stage in the Palace of Double Glory. The painting was based on relief sculptures at Zhao Ling, the tomb of Emperor Taizong of the Tang dynasty. Enraged at the time by the theft of the cultural relics in the palace, Pui ordered the Imperial Household Department to find out the truth, but as it happened, this caused even greater trouble. On June the 26th, 1923, eunuchs set the Palace of Good Fortune on fire in order to destroy any evidence of their theft. And sadly, it was here that cultural relics left by Emperor Chenlong to Emperor Jiajing had been stored in boxes. It is said that about 1,000 gold images of Buddha had been stored in this palace, but then later, employees from a jewelry shop made 17,000 tails of gold bars and leaves from what they found in the ashes. The deliberate destruction of the Palace of Good Fortune was, of course, condemned nationwide. Pui, meanwhile, aware that he would have to move out of the Forbidden City sooner or later, began to transfer cultural relics in the name of granting rewards to his brother Pu Jie. During his stay in the Inner Palace over a period of about a dozen years, Pui had already granted many articles to his favorite ministers. Incredibly, Han Chi Zai at a night feast, a masterpiece by Gu Hong Jung, a prominent painter of the Southern Tang Dynasty in the 10th century, had been granted by Pu Yi to one of his tutors. Although the painting was eventually recovered, it was taken out of the palace by Pu Yi and later bought by a private collector. After the founding of the People's Republic, the government bought it back from Hong Kong and handed it over to the Palace Museum. Among the numerous relics in the Forbidden City were two reproductions of Ode to the Goddess of the Loire River, a painting by Gu Kaijiu of the 4th century. Pui granted one of the two reproductions to another tutor, and it was later collected by the Fear Gallery of Art in Washington, D.C. Pui had granted cultural relics to his favorite ministers to show his generosity, but his granting of objects to his brother Pujir was nothing more than a sort of pre-arranged theft. As an emperor who had abdicated, Pui did not have the courage to take cultural relics out of the palace himself. Instead, he made his brother Pujir his study companion, and after each session, a eunuch would wrap up works of calligraphy and paintings, or rare books, and then hand them to Pujir before he left the palace. The thefts continued in this manner almost every day for more than half a year.
This is a list of rewards granted to Pujir, discovered by a special committee in charge of remaining problems related to the Qing court. It indicates that the theft of treasures began on the 13th day of the 7th lunar month in 1922, and that it involved 68 rare books of the Song and Yuan dynasties, and 1,285 calligraphic works and paintings from various dynasties. 26 pieces were granted on the 8th day of the 11th lunar month alone. On February 23, 1925, three months after he had been expelled from the Forbidden City, Pu Yi left Beijing for Zhang Yuan Garden and the Japanese concession in Tianjin. He then set up the Tianjin office of the Qing court, from which The September 18th incident of 1931 had not long taken place when on November the 10th, Pu Yi left Tianjin for Chengchun, then under the occupation of Japanese troops. On March the 9th, 1932, he signed the traitorous Japanese Manchu Protocol, through which he became the emperor of the puppet state of Manchu Kuo. Cultural relics the Puyi had taken out of the Forbidden City that still remained were carried from Tianjin to Chanchuan and placed in the storehouse of a building known as Small White Mansion. Meanwhile, the newly established Palace Museum was preparing to shift cultural relics to the south to ensure their safety due to the reality of the deteriorating overall situation. Preparatory work had started shortly after the September 18th incident and had been going on for more than a year. A few days before the cultural relics of the Forbidden City were loaded and transported to the south, Wu Ying, secretary to the curator, was appointed as the man to escort the first batch of cultural relics. Many people were worried about this first planned shift of so many national treasures from the Forbidden City, some even attempting to prevent the move by force. Because this E.P.G., the curator of the Palace Museum, reported the situation to the national government, which responded by stating that if the country was subjugated by the enemy, it could be revived someday, but that if culture perished, it could never be retrieved. The cultural relics from the Forbidden City were to be immediately shifted to Shanghai. On the night of February 5, 1933, a large number of carts entered the Forbidden City, where, on the square in front of the Gate of Divine Prowess, the cultural relics were loaded onto them before leaving for the railway station through Meridian Gate. Na Chuliang, a staff member of the Palace Museum, later recalled what took place that night. It was very quiet. No sound could be heard, except some noises from the carts. Nobody talked or sang. It was a desolate scene. Nobody knew when the national treasures would be brought back. The next morning, a 
train loaded with cultural relics moved out of the major railway station in Beiping, starting the largest and longest shift of cultural relics in human history. The train passed Zhengzhou and Shuzhou before reaching Pukou in Nanjing. After they arrived in Pukou, staff members of the Palace Museum had to look for a depot for the cultural relics. At the time, Na Jieliang said they were carrying a coffin to find a graveyard. <laughs> Bujadawanarunma, Wu Ying, who was in charge of escorting these cultural relics, asked for instructions from the Nanjing government and even talked to his president, Lin Xin, but to no avail. Song Ziwen was away. Yang Xin said, You said, Half a month later, T.V. Sung returned to Nanjing from Shanghai and called a meeting. It was decided in mid-March that documents and archives should be retained in Nanjing, while the rest of the cultural relics should be transferred to Shanghai. Over a period of more than three months, Another four batches of cultural relics were transported to Shanghai and placed in the storehouse of a Catholic church in the French concession. Among the 19,000 boxes of cultural relics, 13,000 had come from the Forbidden City. These oriental treasures stayed here safely for four years under the protection of the Western concession. September 26, 1936, saw the completion of a storehouse belonging to the Palace Museum in Nanjing, and later, the Nanjing branch of the Palace Museum was established. Ma Hung succeeded Yi Peiji as curator and took charge of the southbound shift of cultural relics. Those stored in Shanghai were transferred to Nanjing, but then, just half a year later, they had to be moved again. On July 7, 1937, the Lugo Bridge incident took place and the Japanese began their full-scale aggression against China. On August 13, Japanese began to bomb Shanghai. Nanjing was in imminent danger. The national government in Nanjing ordered the Palace Museum to immediately transfer the cultural relics stored in Nanjing westward to the vast rear area. Some 80 boxes of cultural relics were carried to Chengshu by water, and then by land along the south route. 9,000 boxes were shipped to Zhongqing by water along the central route, and 7,000 boxes were transferred to Baji by land along the north route. The South Route consignment of cultural relics began first, but by the time the transfer of both along the Central and North Route started, the Japanese had already occupied Shanghai and had begun to bomb Nanjing. The last batch of cultural relics was to be shipped along the Central Route, but no Chinese ship was available. 
the escort, Yor Derming, asked the captain of a British vessel to help ship the cultural relics to Hong Kong. A year later, the Central Route consignment of cultural relics finally reached Chongqing. When Chongqing was bombed, the cultural relics were safe in Anggu Township in Lushan. The shift of cultural relics along the north route proved to be more perilous. Japanese bombers came just as the train carrying cultural relics reached Zhongzhou. Wangi 10 days after the departure of the cultural relics, Japanese troops occupied Nanjing and committed the atrocious Nanjing Massacre. After the South Route consignment of cultural relics reached Changcha, they were stored in the library of Hunan University. A plan had been made to dig a cave in the hill near evening enjoying pavilion to store these cultural relics the Japanese began to bomb Changsha before the plan could be carried out. This meant that the cultural relics had to be moved yet again. A week later, the library of Hunan University was razed to the ground, and Evening and Join Pavilion was destroyed in the bombing. The South Route consignment of cultural relics avoided disaster and reached Anshuan and Guizhou province where they were stored in a cave for six years until they were transferred to Baoxian County in Sichuan province. The North Route consignment of cultural relics, however, remained in Baoji for less than three months. As this city was also being bombed by enemy planes, they had to be transferred westward. <laughs> The North Route consignment avoided the enemy's bombing and was carried across the Qingling Mountains. Na Jiliang recalled, it was snowing when the trucks set off. Very soon the road was covered with snow. The tires of the trucks had to be fitted with iron chains and everybody trembled with fear. The North Route consignment of cultural relics was moved from place to place over a period of more than a year before reaching Ermei in Sichuan province via Hanzhong and Chengdu. The Palace Museum established an office in Ermei. Say a few words, 
，这故宫这东西都在这些，都都没有说是私心顾自个儿的，把这丢下。你甭管有警报也好，是有什么事儿呀，他不回先回家，先回后房。Giant Buddha temple, where the cultural relics were stored, can no longer be found. But the big Bengyang tree is still standing at the gate as a witness to what took place in those days. Of the 13,000 boxes of cultural relics moved out of the Forbidden City. A small percentage was retained in Nanjing, while the lion's share was shifted safely to the vast rear area. Over a period of more than five years, staff members of the Palace Museum carried these national treasures across most of China, yet not a single piece was lost or damaged. What they achieved. Was a miracle in the world history of cultural relics. As the cultural relics were being shifted westward, the Japanese were entering the Forbidden City. A report stated that the Japanese lifted 66 bronze jars, four bronze guns. And 91 bronze lantern stands that could not be dated, and took them to smelting furnaces in Tianjin to make weapons. Fortunately, most of them were recovered after the victory of the War of Resistance. During the War of Resistance, Puyi was living in the Puppet Imperial Palace in Chengchun. On August 8, 1945, however, the Soviet Red Army entered northeast China, and Puyi prepared to flee to Japan. But due to haste, he took only some 120 calligraphic works and paintings and some jewelry out of a small white mansion. Three days later, he was captured by the Soviet Red Army in Shenyang, and the cultural relics he had with him were handed to the Northeast China Museum, the predecessor of present-day Liaoning Museum. Today, the number of such cultural relics preserved at Liaoning Museum is second only to the number preserved in the Palace Museum. Maids of honor wearing flowers in their hair by Zhou Feng, a painter of the Tang Dynasty, and Meng Dian script by Ou Yangchun, a calligrapher of the Tang Dynasty, are rare treasures and the pride of Liaoning Museum. Shortly after Pu Yi left Small White Mansion, a large number of cultural relics he had left there were looted by his guards. As a result. Many calligraphic works and paintings were damaged, and the rest fell into private hands. Three works by Li Gongling, a painter of the Northern Song Dynasty, had been handed down to the present age. There were five horses, reproduction of Wei Yan paintings, pasturing horses, and three horses. The painting "Three Horses" was torn to pieces in the looting. Liao Li Chao Street in Beijing had become a cultural market as far back as the Qianlong period. It reached a height of prosperity after the victory of the War of Resistance, due to the fact that many calligraphic works and paintings that had been seized from Small White Mansion were turning up here. Antique dealers refer to them as goods from the northeast. Duke Wen of Jin revived the state. A painting by Li Tang of the Southern Song Dynasty was bought by a private collector who later donated it to the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York. 
These hoods from the Northeast were collected by at least six museums in the United States, with over 430 pieces being collected by the Metropolitan Museum in New York alone. As the cultural relics taken by Puyi were being carried from place to place, the three consignments of cultural relics that had been shifted westward to the vast rear area were being transferred back to Nanjing. However, on the eve of the founding of the People's Republic, Chiang Kai-shek ordered the shipment of these cultural relics to Taiwan. Between December 22, 1948 and February 1949, a total of 2,972 boxes of cultural relics were shipped to Taiwan. And while these boxes accounted for just one quarter of all those shifted southward from the Forbidden City, their contents were among the best. Today, the cultural relics evacuated from the Palace Museum are stored separately on both sides of the Taiwan streets. And some of those who escorted the national treasures to Taiwan have never returned to the mainland. With the support of the government, cultural relics retained in Nanjing were carried back to the Palace Museum. In 1952, a policy was formulated to help facilitate the collection of cultural relics that had been taken out of the Forbidden City and later found at Liu Lichong and other places in China. As a result, more cultural relics were transferred from other museums to enrich the collection of the Palace Museum. In time, the painting, the Festival of Pure Brightness on the River, and other cultural relics returned to the Palace Museum, many of them as donations from individuals. The names of those who have donated cultural relics to the Palace Museum can be seen on the walls in the Palace of Benevolence. One of the names is that of Zhang Boju, a prominent collector of this time. His script on recovery by Lu Ji of the Eastern Jin Dynasty is generally acknowledged as the earliest masterpiece of calligraphy in the form of a scroll. Zhang Boju stitched it in his underclothes and wore it all day so the Japanese would not find it. And after the founding of the People's Republic, he donated it, along with seven other treasures, to the Palace Museum. In 1951, at a time when China was still in financial difficulties, Premier Zhou Enlai approved the purchase of Buyuan script and mid-autumn script from Hong Kong at the cost of 480,000 yuan in foreign exchange. These works are two of the three treasures preserved in the Hall of Three Treasures in the Forbidden City. But since that time, yet more cultural relics taken from the Forbidden City and out of China have been reacquired from overseas. In 1995, the Palace Museum bought back 10 odes by Zhang Chen of the Northern Song Dynasty at a cost of 18 million yuan, and in 2003, it bought back Ode to the Sending Out of Troops of the Sui Dynasty, the earliest extant piece of calligraphy in China, at a cost of 22 million yuan. 
。过去我们这些东西都都流失到海外去了，现在是海外的中国的东西倒回来了，这是一个相当重要的。大家，我们应该为这个状况感到高兴，这是我们国家实力强大的一个表示，一一个反应。Over the past 50 years and more, about 240,000 cultural relics have been newly collected by the Palace Museum. With the collection of 1.5 million articles, the Palace Museum is truly a treasure house of intellectual wealth and human arts. The Palace Museum, with its multitude of treasures, is a carrier of an age-old civilization and a witness to the many vicissitudes of the centuries. And each of the cultural relics here has a tale of its own, perhaps tragic, perhaps peculiar, perhaps intricate. The fate of each one marks the rise and fall of various dynasties in Chinese history.